In today's orchards, we find a great diversity of fruit trees with adaptations to local growing conditions, disease resistance, and also greatly reduced canopy sizes. And while we tend to see these characteristics in the above ground portion of the tree, the source of many of these traits lies hidden below ground in the rootstocks. Now most of our fruit trees that we grow, both in commercial and backyard orchards, are grafted. And what grafting means is we take the aerial portion of one cultivar and we join it with the roots of another cultivar. And so this is done by taking a rootstock plant that has some certain characteristics we're looking for, um, usually disease resistance or dwarfing, and we literally cut a slice into that shoot and then we take a piece of what's called our scion wood, which is a shoot from a plant that has our desirable fruit characteristics, or in this case, I'm working with ornamental plants. And we simply insert that into the rootstock. And we're gonna bind this. I have an example where it's been bound together. And this wound is gonna heal, um, and the two pieces are gonna seal together and unite. And eventually, we'll be able to cut off the aerial portion of our rootstock and what we'll be left with are the roots from one plant and the aerial portion of another or the scion. So we have the good benefits of our roots but the ornamental or fruiting characteristics that we want uh, in the aerial portion. With fruit trees many of them are grafted this way but another way to do it is to cut just a bud out of that uh, aerial stem, the scion, and we join just the bud onto our rootstock, and then again we'd come back and cut off this aerial portion. So these are just two different ways of grafting fruit trees. It sure seems like a lot of work, so why do we go through all this trouble? Well, rootstocks, of course, as I mentioned, can produce these desirable traits. You can have a plant that's well adapted to your soils, um, whether they're heavy clay or maybe they're dry. But one of the greatest benefits we get is disease resistance. And for an example, many apple trees are grafted onto rootstocks that provide resistance to fire blight or apple scab, some of our worst diseases of apples. Another wonderful example would be that of grapes. There's a rootstock that saved the wine industry of France against a disease called phylloxera. So in this way, rootstock selection is somewhat of our first line of defense in an integrated pest management system. Another benefit of rootstocks is that they can contribute uh, to the overall mature size of that tree. Usually when we purchase a fruit tree, it's available on a standard, a semi-dwarf, and a dwarf rootstock. The dwarf producing the smallest canopy of tree and the standard the largest. So when you're selecting fruits for your backyard, you want to pay as much attention to the rootstock as the flavor or color of the fruit that you're selecting so that you get the right tree for your landscape. One thing we want to look for with our grafted fruit trees are suckers or shoots that emerge from the rootstock rather than from the trunk of the plant. These suckers are going to have different characteristics than the plant that we're looking for. They're not gonna have the same fruit quality, for example, and sometimes they can be more vigorous and suck some of the energy away from the main plant that we're trying to grow. So if you ever see these suckers, you wanna go in and remove them. Now it's usually pretty obvious where the graft is along our trunk, uh, but sometimes things are less clear cut. We planted this Carolina Bell peach tree last season and uh, have this interesting diversity in growth. It's supposed to be a dwarf tree, and when we plant fruit trees, we tip the top to try to force branching out. But we have this rather unusual branch on the east side that's much more vigorous than the rest. And um, after consulting with our fruit specialist, we decided that this must be coming from below the graft. Peach trees are bud grafted, and it's not very obvious where that graft is. We don't see a very obvious wound. So what we decide is that because this is a dwarf tree and this is just one year's of growth, this is obviously very vigorous and that we should remove it so that more energy can go into our, what we know is our desired cultivar. Now, of course, that's gonna leave our canopy a little lopsided, but you can see there's some buds breaking here and we can select some of these shoots 
that'll grow out in that direction to fill out this side of the tree. Now, if you look towards the base of the trunk, even below our side branch, there's some other buds that are breaking open, and we wanna be sure to remove any shoots that emerge from those buds as well.